the keto diet or the carnivore diet? Which diet is better? There's so much information out on the internet between YouTube and podcast and Instagram and success stories that it can be overwhelming and confusing to figure out what's gonna work best for you. So let's actually take a step back and talk about this for a minute. Welcome back, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today we're gonna to talk about pros and cons of carnivore versus keto, which one might work better for you, depending on the health that you are walking into the diet with. Before I jump into that, my little disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and I do think it is important when you switch to a new way of eating to work with a health professional to guide you, just to make sure that if you're on any medications that you have some guidance and help there. So which diet is better? Well, here's a little spoiler alert. The one that's better is the one that works for you, but I do have a ton of research that I have done over the last couple of years, and thousands of people that I've spoken with that maybe will help you narrow this down a little bit. I wanna talk a little bit first about the carnivore diet because it's the one that I did for two years. I am now doing a more ketogenic approach, but I wanna talk about where the carnivore diet does shine. So I started the carnivore diet because I was incredibly inflamed. I was reacting to most plant food that I was eating. I had IBS, I had eczema, I had PCOS. I had a lot of issues going on in my body that just anytime I put plant matter in there, it would just go crazy and it was horrible. So I think if you're dealing with an autoimmune condition that the carnivore diet really does shine. It really is beneficial for people to help calm down all that inflammation and you really will feel better pretty quickly once you implement this diet and get adapted over to it. As far as ease of use goes, I do think the carnivore diet is fairly easy because you don't have a ton of food to choose from. There's meat, eggs, and limited dairy. Now, if you have autoimmune issues, I do recommend kind of laying off the dairy, staying away from the dairy, and possibly even the eggs as well. If you're suffering with food addiction or sugar addiction, the carnivore diet also shines because you have limited options. It's a lot easier when you don't have sweeteners, when you don't have any of those things in your body for you to resist those temptations and you clear your house out of all those items. I think that can make the carnivore diet extremely easy. Now, need for supplements. This is really a complicated topic. I think that there's a need for mineral replacement and electrolyte replacement regardless of what diet that you eat because our soil is incredibly depleted very depleted so even a standard american diet you're going to need some mineral replacement like magnesium in your diet carnivore diet's no different just because you start eating only meat you don't get away with eating food that has been fed from a depleted soil so i do think that the carnivore diet you will have a little bit more of a difficult time holding on to your minerals and you will need to be a little bit more careful around this area of supplementation. Let's talk about weight loss. So a lot of people come to the carnivore diet hoping to lose weight. And I see a lot of men having great success in losing weight, but I don't see as many women having success in losing weight. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done. I do know some women that have done the carnivore diet and they literally can't keep weight on their bodies, but I fell into the second camp of women that it helped to take the inflammation down, but it was not a miracle weight loss diet for me. I also see women gaining weight on the carnivore diet. It's just a bit more difficult to manage sometimes your satiety, especially if you're used to being a big volume eater. A lot of women, we've been kind of told to eat big salads, to eat a lot of fiber. And so when you switch to a diet with no fiber, without all that extra volume, it can be a little bit tricky and people do tend to overeat a little bit more. Now, Kelly Hogan is someone who did a ketogenic approach. Now, there was not really a keto diet back in the day when she did this, but she was eating meat, vegetables, sugar-free jello, you know, your, your typical ketogenic foods, and that's how she lost 120 pounds. I will link below the interview that her and I did a year ago where she talked about this in depth. She jumped to a carnivore diet because she wanted more simplicity. She was struggling with fertility. And so when she went to a carnivore diet, she actually gained 20 pounds. She's still carnivore all these years later, so she obviously worked it out. 
but I do see this happening for women that they switch over to carnivore diet and they do gain weight. The other thing with carnivore diet is hormonal balance. This goes both ways. So some people will come to carnivore and have amazing hormonal health. Some people have to tweak and tinker with it a little bit more as I did. I had to switch about a year in my protein fat ratio. So I started having to actually weigh and measure my food a bit more so that I was eating at least 80% fat, usually a little bit higher, sometimes up to 85, 90% fat and 10% protein in order to get my hormones to be happy. I find that people with diabetes, pre-diabetes, which a lot of people have pre-diabetes and they just have no idea that they even have this, they have to take this higher fat approach with a carnivore diet. So know your health history going in. Are you pre-diabetic? This is something you really might want to take a look at when you do a carnivore diet is making sure that your macronutrient ratios are in that ketogenic ratio. A lot of people will argue and say that our ancestors did a carnivore diet. And you know what? You guys weren't there. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this argument of ancestral eating, of what the ancestors did, there's some validity to it. But as far as I know, there was not really a population of people that never foraged for plants and in-season fruits. They, there was not really populations, unless you're talking about the Inuit, that survived exclusively just on meat and never foraged for plants at all. The other thing about the ancestral argument is that we have cell phones, we have all kinds of environmental pollutants, we have xenoestrogens, things we put on our skin, we have blue light, we have so many modern stresses in our lives. We don't live outside, we live indoors, right? That we can't really use that ancestral argument all the time. We have to take into account the stresses that our bodies go through here in these modern times and take a little step back from that ancestral argument. The last thing I'll say about the carnivore diet is that gut health that I mentioned in the first point could be an issue for some people because your gut doesn't actually always heal on carnivore. You may need to do some extra things. Again, check out my gut health playlist. I have done a lot to heal my gut, which is why I think now I'm able to easily eat plants on a ketogenic diet. I'm not eating, you know, seven cups of vegetables a day. I'm not doing the Dr. Berg format, which no hate if you are, but that's not what I'm doing uh, with my ketogenic protocol. But I think the reason I was able to start adding in foods very easily was that I had to do this extra work of healing my gut. So I have worked with a company called Thrive to test my gut. I will put their link below this video and you can follow that journey again on my gut health playlist. Okay, finally, let's talk about keto. Now keto actually has a ton of scientific research behind it. It was first used for epilepsy in children that had these horrible seizures. And so it's been studied quite a bit. It's been studied in everything from epilepsy to autism, traumatic brain injury. It is now being studied for psychiatric disorders, bipolar and schizophrenia. And I think there are amazing things about the ketogenic diet. Just a little side note, sorry to jump back to carnivore. I think if you have some of these issues that if you're going to do a carnivore diet, you have to, now I'm not gonna say have to, but it'd be really wise to approach the carnivore diet from that high fat approach where you are moderating your protein and adding in more fat like beef suet, beef fat, all of those fats are really gonna help you. You can also use pork fat if you don't have a reaction to those, but all of those are really gonna help you make the carnivore diet a more ketogenic protocol. But the keto diet has a lot of research and a lot of power behind it. And I think that it's a lot more well documented than the carnivore diet. So that's healing properties of the keto diet. I think that it's tremendous for healing, but some people really do need to take a low anti-nutrient approach to the diet. So they're gonna wanna stay away from things like oxalates, lectins, those nightshades, which I still stay away from on my approach to ketogenic. I will make a video for you guys in the future telling you about all the foods that I still avoid even though I'm on a ketogenic protocol. Speaking of food avoidance, I also think that people with food addiction and sugar addiction issues still have to kind of have some boundaries in the keto space. I think the keto treats, keto bars, keto cakes, keto cupcakes are really a bad idea if you're struggling with food or sugar addiction. You're just moving from one 
bunch of junk to another bunch of junk. When I look at a ketogenic diet, I think it's better to stay at a whole foods approach. Another advantage to someone doing a keto diet over a carnivore diet is there's just a little bit more variety that you can choose from. You're not just pulling from meat, eggs, and a little bit of dairy. You can have a variety of foods, and some people are just gonna do better when they have more foods to choose from. When we start talking about the microbiome again, and it, this science is very young, there are some doctors in the keto and the carnivore space that say microbiome science is garbage and probiotics are stupid. It's very young science, and I've had some of those top experts on my podcast and spoken personally with them. I do think there is some validity to that, and I don't know the long-term effects of not having that plant matter, not having those foods that feed that gut bacteria that fuels things such as your metabolism. So I start to wonder on a carnivore diet if people are gaining weight because they're not feeding that bacteria in their gut microbiome. I actually had that experience when I tested my gut with Thrive that I had very low acromantia. And acromantia is a gut bacteria that has been tied to metabolic health. When I started adding in some probiotics, my acromantia went up and I actually lost six pounds. Now that I'm doing a ketogenic approach, I'm also feeling a little bit more full. I'm having better satiety and the scale has gone down a little bit more. Not drastically, because I'm not trying to cut. I'm not trying to lose a lot of weight right now, but I have noticed it's a bit easier for me to manage my weight and my satiety with a ketogenic approach versus a carnivore diet approach. This is gonna really vary from person to person. So I've talked to tons of people that were doing keto and then went carnivore and were like, wow, I feel so much better. Things are going so much better for me. The scale's finally moving. My autoimmune issues are gone. I feel great. And then I've talked to people who were on carnivore and went to keto. Perhaps they did not have a bunch of autoimmune issues or really a lot of issues going on with their gut. And they went to keto and they started losing all the weight that they gained on carnivore and then losing more weight. So I think this is a very nuanced topic. I think that you can do carnivore using ketogenic macros if you have diabetes, prediabetes, if you've got a traumatic brain injury, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, I think that that's gonna be a better approach for you to do carnivore that way. And then if you're really looking more to optimize weight loss and satiety and microbiome, if you believe in that, right, then keto might be a better approach for you. But it's also individual and nuanced and you really have to find what works best for you. So I really do hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I think the best diet is the one that you can stick to, that you can adhere to. And please leave me a comment below. Let me know what diet you're on. Which one works best for you? Did you do carnivore and gain a bunch of weight? Did you do carnivore and lose a bunch of weight? I really would love to know down in the comments. So let's talk in the next video. Thanks again for being here. Bye guys.